Hey everybody, Robert here from Black Belt Gaming. My normal time to do some filming got interrupted this week, so um, sorry about the delay. I'm going to continue my playthrough here of the Temple of Elemental Evil Adventure 2, the Air Elemental, and the dragon that it had uh, captured here. Um, this dragon is on the run now trying to escape we're going to continue our round of three adventurers the fighter the cleric and the wizard some of you let me know that the cleric neglected to draw a treasure after killing the troglodyte uh, last round so our last set of turns so I'm going to go ahead and draw a treasure for the cleric now. Alright, the treasure card drawn is called Blessing of Mask. Let's zoom in on this a little bit here. It's a fortune. Uh, the defenses constructed by the cult are no match for the master of all thieves. We get to choose A or B. A hero gains a hundred gold pieces or disable one trap within one tile of your hero and we discard this after playing it. I'm very tempted to go for the gold but let me make sure there are no traps that are of immediate concern. I don't think so so let's take the gold pieces and and we'll just uh, we'll give it to the cleric. All right, let's get back to the action here. Our fighter, Alaros. He's got a fire bat and an air elemental right behind him. Here's our wizard over here uh, off to the side. So he is sharing this tile with a fire bat and the air elemental. And I believe the thing we need to do is kill that air elemental. I think that's, that's really our focus here. Okay, the fighter is going to take a move and just take one step to get close to this air elemental. And he's going to make a really uh, just an at will basic attack. And I don't really think I have much that's going to help me here, so we're just going to use our basic uh, battle axe attack to attack an adjacent monster. Uh, we can move up to two spaces after the attack if we want to. Plus six, but remember that uh, our hero has advantage. All right, so let's make this battle axe attack. We get to roll the d20 two times. Really, we don't have a lot to worry about. This air elemental's armor class isn't the best. So this is great. Attack number one is a 20. And you know, I'm not exactly sure if there are critical hits rolled on a 20. There may be. Um, well, yes, Alaros here on his character card says that he rolls a critical hit on a roll of 18 or higher. So let me check what the critical hit rule is. Well, basically, that's uh, plus one damage, so that's good. We get to hit the the monster here for not only one, but uh, two damage. And advantage here. The next time you make an attack, roll the dice twice. I don't want to do that. don't need to do that. So this was our next attack, so I think we lose this now. And... We have to see if we want to do anything else with the fighter. Well, I took the treasure card out of his uh, stack that was granting him 100 gold pieces and gave him a token instead. But as you can see, uh, Alaros is down four hit points. He suffered four hit points of damage. And I'm thinking about maybe letting him use this healing ember just to keep him uh, up on his feet and as strong as possible. I don't know, we could have another hero that might need it more. 
so I'm not sure if I should use it now or hang on to it for a while. Maybe I should hang on to it. Some of you have also said that if we can get through the adventure, being able to sell something like this for 300 gold pieces would be very valuable. So maybe that's the better choice. I should use it if I just really need to. But the name of the game here is taking down this air elemental. So what if we use this? Uh, it's our last card that is not an at-will attack card. It's an action surge. Uh, this allows us to take one additional action. Let's make it an attack. And let's attack again. So we'll just move it right back over here. This attack roll I don't think is going to have advantage on it. I think we lost that when we made the attack uh, before. So let's hope we can get an armor class of 10. Uh, we've rolled a 15 and that is good enough to hit so that's going to put a third point of damage on the air elemental. Alright so with our fighters actions pretty much complete um, I don't think there's really much of any other movement that I could take. I don't know that does let me take two steps after I use the battle axe doesn't it? After your attack your hero may move two spaces I guess the question is, do I want to move away from the air elemental? I don't know if I really have to worry about encounter cards right now because we do have a pretty decent stack of experience points and we should be able to cancel at least two um, encounter cards. And I'm making that assumption off of previous editions of the game where you could spend five experience points to cancel an encounter card if you wanted to. Well, after checking the rule book, it does indeed look like that that is the case. So I think I will use his, his two steps of movement. This is granted after he made his last attack. And I think we want to try to maybe step back a couple of steps, but I don't think I want to go over here to the edge. That gets me on a different tile, but not over to the edge, because I, I really don't think I want him to explore. Uh, I know I'm going to have to deal with an encounter card for not exploring, but what if we uh, drew one of those black tiles and it had monsters on it, and that would be just bad news all around, so... Let's do that. That's going to finish his hero phase, uh, the exploration phase. We're going to basically skip and go down to the villain phase and draw a uh, encounter card. All right. Um, I haven't seen this one before. This is an event, Rage of Imix. Even a candle fire can grow into a blaze. Place a Rage of Imix token on your hero's tile. Each hero on a tile with a Rage of Emix token takes two damage. Well, that's that's going to be the Cleric and the Fighter. And actually the Cleric has already suffered four hit points and is down half health. And he's, uh, the Cleric's basically flanked here, so I really don't want to add any more damage to the Cleric. So. Let's go ahead and spend five experience points to cancel this. Uh, I think that's a wise move, but uh, two, four, five, that should do it. So that uh, encounter card is canceled. We don't have to worry about it, but we do have to worry about the monsters that are basically going to activate on the warrior's turn and there's two. Uh, it looks like we've got the fire bat and the knoll archer so let's do the fire bat first. The fire bat is it's going to move adjacent to the closest hero <laughs> and that because he took two steps away that's actually going to be our uh, our wizard 
and is going to make an attack on the wizard with a fiery bite. All right, here's our wizard, only an armor class of uh, 14. So let's do the attack roll. It is a 2, plus 5 is 7. Not good enough to hit the wizard, so the wizard survives the attack. Well, the next one to activate here is the Knoll Archer, and it attacks the hero with um, the fewest hit points remaining. If the Knoll Archer is within two tiles of a hero, well, I think he's going to be able to target the wizard as well. And right now, the wizard only has four hit points remaining, but so does the cleric. So, I guess in a tie situation like that, I'm going to say he's going to go for the cleric. Basically because the cleric has uh, an armor class of 16, which is a little better than our wizard. So let's get ready for the Knoll Archer to try a point-blank bow shot here on the cleric. Here goes the shot. Plus 7, that's a 15. Plus 7, that's indeed a hit. So another point of damage to the cleric that's going to hurt her pretty badly. Take her to five points of damage. Total of eight hit points, so um, only three left. Well, speaking of the cleric, uh, Barrowin, it is the gold dwarf's turn. And we're going to... No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm jumping ahead of myself. We actually have a villain we need to take care of. And that villain needs to activate. In fact, in fact, that villain should have activated before the monsters did. So let's see if I can straighten this out. That's, a, that's me just being a bit rusty here with the, uh, the steps of the game. The villain needs to activate. That's the air elemental. Okay, so here's the air elemental. This thing needs to activate at the beginning of the villain phase. And so, we're just going to have to do a little damage control here. The air elemental is on a tile with a hero, and that, that hero is the wizard. And it's going to attack with whirlwind, whirlwind, uh, plus seven to the attack. And I'm just going to roll that right on the uh, map here. 17, that's going to be a hit. That's going to do 2 damage to the wizard. And that's not good news. The wizard the wizard here only has um, a maximum of 6 hit points. And that's going to drop her down to half health. And I think there's another effect here, isn't there? Uh, hit or miss, move each attacked hero one tile away. I see. Well, which direction would be best? Maybe we want... Um, maybe we could move the wizard back. And... Put the wizard over here by this uh, this statue, and then that would have uh, taken care of the air elemental's actions. So then, what would the fire bat have done? The fire bat, if it is uh, within two tiles of a hero, moves adjacent to the closest hero. Ah, so that would have been actually uh, different. The closest hero would have been the fighter, so it would actually move up like that. And the attack roll with that uh, bat was not even good enough to hit the wizard, so our fighter uh, is safe. I think that gets everything straightened out, and uh, that's just me being rusty here with uh, fighting the villains. So let's continue. We need to work with the cleric now, Barrowin. And um, let's think about what she can do. 
All right, I've looked things over and I think we're gonna go ahead and use her daily power. The big boss is out. We might as well use this mainly just to get some hit point back, uh, some hit points back on our cleric. I'm basically trying to avoid using healing surges if I can help it. So divine strike. Uh, that's going to allow one hero on your hero's tile to regain three hit points. And I think she's going to choose that one hero to be herself. So three hit points will be healed. And then uh, there is a special healer ability that she has right here. That when she uses a daily or utility power one hero on her tile regains a hit point so she's gonna choose herself again and that's gonna take her only to one hit point of damage now she gets to make an attack she gets to attack one adjacent monster the monster that's going to activate on her turn is the bugbear so I think we ought to try to attack the bugbear because if we can hit it uh, we should be able to essentially deactivate it and take it out of the game. So let's go ahead and make that attack roll. I'll try to roll the dice right here on top of the cards. Plus six to her attack. And she rolled a nine. That's going to total exactly what she needs, which is a 15. So just barely good enough. That attack hits the bugbear. So with her uh, big, is it Warhammer? Is that what she's carrying? Yes, she's carrying a big Warhammer. She does a Divine Strike on the Bugbear, uh, crushing this thing's skull. And that drops that big fellow, getting us uh, three experience points and taking him out of the activation rotation. So. Uh, that was that was a good shot. She still got some movement um, available on her turn, and I might want to move her away from the edge of the tile. That may, might make her explore. So let's do that. Let's move her away from the edge of the tile. And you know, I may even want to have her charge the air elemental. Let me think about that. No, I don't think I want to close in on the air elemental just yet. But I do think I want the cleric to move away from the edge of the tile. So I'll have her take a couple of steps forward. She can remain adjacent to the knoll archer, that's fine. And we will move into the exploration phase, which is... Um, basically taking no action there so we move into the villain phase and the very first thing you do uh, in the villain phase is process an encounter card so this is another one we may want to cancel all right the encounter card is uh, cultist fervor and it says uh, even their monstrous allies are inspired by the cultist zeal place a new monster on your hero's tile and then that monster is going to activate. I think with the timing of this I wouldn't be allowed to see what kind of monster it was before I would choose to cancel it or not. So I think there are worse encounter cards than this in the deck. Let's go ahead and bring a monster out. I really don't think this is that bad. At least I hope not. We've got... Well, we've got an air cultist probably rushing in to defend the air elemental. I don't think we have... No, we don't have any other air elementals... Uh, air cultists on the board. Uh, maybe he's rushing in from the side over here. And it's going to activate and I think it's going to actually activate before the air elemental will which is a little strange 
but that's what the encounter card said. So this, this air cultist will activate. Uh, it's going to attack the closest hero with a blinding crossbow bolt. And the closest hero is actually Alaros. So let's give this attack roll right here. That's a 17. That's a great roll. That's uh, one damage to our fighter, and he gains disadvantage. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, got him at half health now, and disadvantage on the fighter. You know, I have a question about this. It said, place a new monster on your hero's tile. That monster activates. Well, we're now rolling through the, the villain phase, and the air elemental is going to go. Is this, um, is this air cultist going to activate a second time? It seems like it will, because uh, the air cultist is going to be in the cleric's stack of uh, creatures to activate on her turn during step three of the villain phase, so I'm inclined to believe that this, um, this air cultist will activate yet again. Let me know what you think about that. Activate once or activate twice. Okay, it is the air elemental's turn again. And fortunately now the air elemental is not on a tile with a hero. So it's going to move one tile towards the closest hero and attacks the hero with the most hit points with a blast of wind. So, um, it's going to move one tile toward the closest hero. So that's going to be uh, right here with the group. Maybe actually we've got space over here. We'll put the elemental right there in the back corner. And the one with the most hit points, that's actually the cleric now, thanks to the uh, healing. So attacking the cleric with this blast of wind plus seven to the attack roll. Um, that's an 18. That's good enough to hit. But fortunately, it's just one damage. So um, that's going to take our cleric, our cleric to two hit points of damage now. Not so bad. But it is time to move into step three of the villain phase. And actually the first thing we do before we activate this uh, cultist, our uh, dragon here, this is our ally that we are trying to save, Michasi, the brass wormling, is actually going to make a move. It's going to move one tile toward the start tile. So that's another move in this direction. Uh, avoiding the traps there as it try, tries to fly out of the dungeon. And then we need to pass this thing uh, two players to our left. Alright, so the, the uh, Wormling is there going to go into the, the stack of Alaros the Fighter. And now, uh, monsters that need to be activating, we just have one, thankfully, because we got rid of the bugbear earlier. And that is the air cultist, which is going to activate again and attacks the closest hero. And once again, that is our fighter. Uh, shoots another bolt. That's going to be a 14. Not good enough to hit our fighter. So 10 plus 4, not going to cut it. So Alaros manages to um, duck under that attack. And that's going to bring the cleric's turn to an end. It's now the wizard is next. All right. The wizard. The wizard, the wizard, the wizard is going to make a movement here with a speed of six. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, six and that definitely puts us in a position where we're not going to be exploring but I think that's okay and what to do I think we want to keep trying to do as much damage to this air elemental as possible so we've got this uh, daily uh, called burning hands 
and choose a tile within one tile so that could be the air elementals tile and we attack each monster plus seven to the attack roll and we're doing uh, three damage on a successful hit but I also saw that the the wizard had another interesting utility power here called um, True Strike. This is a spell and it gains each hero on your hero's tile gains advantage. I'm, I'm tempted to use that but it would be better if we were on the tile with everyone else. So I'm not really sure that she could get there. She was over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, she could. She could do that. However, if that air elemental does attack and hits for two damage, that's going to basically knock her out. But maybe that's a risk we ought to take. We do have healing surges left. And it would be nice if the other heroes had advantage on their attack. And that could even probably cancel the disadvantage on the fighter. And I'm pulling that knowledge from, from the 5th edition rules. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright, alright, we'll put her there. We're going to put her on the tile with, um, with the air elemental. We're going to go ahead and use uh, True Strike as a utility power. And that means that um, each hero gains advantage. That means with Burning Hands we should be able to, I think, wipe the tile clean. I hope. I don't. It, it's not going to kill the Air Elemental, but let's target the Air Elemental first. Uh, we've rolled an 18. I guess we could roll again in case we get a critical. Um, 11. So 18 is the better roll. That's a hit. And I think she's going to be knocked down anyway. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Why don't we go ahead and have her over channel this? After you hit with an attack, you may take one damage to deal plus one damage. So that's going to be four damage uh, to the air elemental, which is great. So if we look at this thing, which currently has three damage on it, we just did four. Five, six, seven. Seven damage total, so we only need to do three more points uh, to knock this thing out. Now, since we overpowered, or I'm sorry, over channeled this spell, I believe that that uh, it, plus one damage is going to be for uh, each attack. So this thing's going to do miss damage of one and that's going to be powered up by another point of damage so I think that's pretty much a sure thing that everything else on that tile is going to get burned but we'll go ahead and uh, just follow the steps in case there's anything I'm missing that's going to hit the air cultist 8 plus 7 what is that Knowles armor class uh, let's see. Only 13. That's a hit too. So I think we just wiped out the the Knoll Archer who had two hit points and we got rid of the Air Cultist with uh, one hit point. So that's more experience points uh, for us in the, in the stack. And very good. So I was, I was primarily concerned with um, using advantage to make sure that I hit the air elemental. But I wonder if every attack, and I think it would be, because it attacks everybody on the tile. 
So I guess every attack roll you would make there for Burning Hands would have advantage. Anyway, advantage for the wizard is now spent, but I uh, believe it said every hero on the tile gains advantage from that utility power. And if that's the case, yeah, each hero gains advantage. Then uh, we need to give our cleric this advantage uh, token. And then over here with our fighter, I believe he's going to not gain advantage, but I think he's going to lose disadvantage. I think those will cancel each other out. So that's kind of good news for him too. So with the wizard's hero phase to an end, it's time to draw an encounter card, and I've got Earthquake. Uh, to the Earth cultists, shaking the ground is Child's Play. Interesting, it, it has a town resolution. Each hero on your tile moves one tile in the direction of the tile's arrow, then takes one damage. So if we do this, uh, that's going to shift everybody this way. Everybody. And actually, I don't know, that may not be such a bad thing. Because if we stay on that tile, the, um, the air ele elemental, I think, is going to attack everybody. Let me double check the tactics here. Attacks each hero. I guess we'll go ahead and let this happen. I know it's going to drop the wizard, but it might actually do us a little bit of a favor. So, Earthquake. Um, Alaros gets moved down, and the wizard gets moved down, and, and she drops, and, and the cleric gets moved down. The uh, cultist and the knoll are gone. And by the way, I think I am missing treasure cards here. That was an old habit of mine. I was always bad. Uh, I was always bad at forgetting that. I believe we should have had a treasure card here on the cleric's turn for dropping the bugbear. And I think that would have been a pouch of copper and then our wizard dropped uh, several opponents and we've got the same a pouch of copper so a hundred gold piece to uh, tokens added to their character cards alright so the fighter the fighter still uh, controls the fire bat the wizard um, is not controlling the dragon or any other creatures so before we would do really any of that we just did our environment uh, I'm sorry our encounter card we need to activate the air elemental so I think the reason it was good to move away and by the way I need to assign one damage to our cleric for the earthquake and then another point of damage here to our fighter. That's going to take him to 6 damage. So 6 out of 10. He's still hanging in there. But that air elemental is going to activate and uh, it's going to need to move. So it's once again going to follow our hero heroes into this room. Maybe we'll move the wizard over here. Trying to cut off their escape. And it's going to attack... I think it was the hero with the most hit points with a blast of wind. So the hero with the most hit points is, uh, let's see, he has four. And that's, that's going to be the cleric. So let's see what kind of attack roll we have here. Plus seven. That's, that's, a, that's a hit. So another point of damage. Uh, to the cleric from the air elemental. All right, so that kind of puts her right back again at half health. So there you have it. 
We still have the lone little fire bat, the air elemental, and the dragon. It's on his way out of the dungeon. And I believe that's going to finish up this turn. The air elemental has suffered five, six, seven, seven hit points. It only has three remaining. We might be able to pull out a win here next turn. We'll see what happens. Once again, uh, I was a bit rusty tonight due to the delay in taping. So apologize for any errors. Hopefully I'm catching these, but uh, if I missed anything, let me know. Uh, always appreciate your uh, comments, advice, and, and feedback. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you'll join me again soon for what's possibly the conclusion of Adventure 2 here in the Temple of Elemental Evil.